Good morning for our morning worship and prayer. Let me read to you 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. It says here, But God's firm foundation stands, bearing this seal. The Lord knows who are His. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Lord, even today, we speak and we declare that indeed, Lord God, Your name is in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, we come to You. Lord God, thank You for reminding us that we are before you always, God, and you know who are his. Lord, even as we worship, align our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All creation speaks your glory. Angels declare you worthy. You spoke a word and created the earth The stars erupted in praise The stars erupted in praise We said in all of you We said in all of you Here in your presence Set our eyes on you. We said no of you. We said no of you. Here in your presence, let our words be few. You give life. of the sea bow before you stretched out the heavens and set them in place the wonder your glory displayed your wonder your glory displayed your wonder your glory displayed we said in the Have you ever been misrepresented? Maybe you just 
wanted, what is best for someone. But instead, you get an unfair treatment and then gets accused. Alam mo yung feeling na yun? No? Yung may nagsasabi sa'yo ng isang bagay, pero hindi ka naman talaga ganon. And totally missed your intention. What do you mean? Maybe for some of us here, maybe you are that parent who just made a decision for the benefit and for the best of your child only to get complaints from the people that you love. Or maybe you are a student who tried to cover up for your classmates' lack of responsibility. Alam mo yun, yung mga pabigat minsan sa project. And you ended up being the outcast. Or maybe in your work, where you just want what is best for the company, thinking of ideas, ang ending, sip-sip ka pa. <laughs> or maybe you are that business owner who's thinking whatever you can for your employees only to have a lot of negative feedback from your um, employees. Whatever it is, I believe you and me, we have felt that in one way or another. And even for those in chi- inside church, when you're a victory group leader or maybe you are leading a victory group or you're volunteering in ministry, I'm sure you've also experienced that. You know what I mean? That you are that person who wants to serve those person or the, those attendees or those who attend our church. And instead, they have something bad to say about you. You just tried to help. You tried to lead, but was treated badly. You know what? It is one thing to have someone criticize you. And it's a whole different thing when that person is someone that you love. That group of people are those people that you're serving. That they don't only misunderstand you, but they actually hate you. Or even worse, rebel against you. Today, we are going to look at one of the hardest situation, leadership situation that Moses faced. We will be reading from Numbers chapter 16. Now, mind you, this is a long chapter and I want to encourage you to read through it. We'll just be reading a couple of verses and I'll be reading an excerpt from the Tagalog version of number 16, which is Bilang. Okay? So, let me read for all of us here Numbers chapter 16, 1 to 3. It says here, Now Korah, the son of Izar, son of Kohath, son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with the number of the, with the, number of the people of Israel, 250 chiefs of the congregation, chosen from the assembly, well-known men. They assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said to them, You have gone too far. For all in the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? Now let me read to us the Tagalog version of this from Ang Salita ng Diyos. Okay, bilang, um, labing anim. Sabi dito, Sinabi ni Moises kay Korah, Bukas, Bukas, ikaw at ang iyong mga tagasunod ay pupunta sa presensya ng Panginoon sa toldang tipanan at pupunta rin dito sa si Aaron. Ang dalawang daan limang put na mga tagasunod mo ay pagdalihin mo ng tigi isang lalagyan ng insenso. Palagyan mo ito ng insenso at ihandog sa Panginoon. Kayo ni Aaron ay magdala rin ng lalagyan ng insenso. And then it says here, as well, okay, in verses 12 to 14, it says here, Pagkatapos pinatawag ni Moises sina Datan at Abiram na mga anak ni Eliab, pero sinabi nila, hindi kami pupunta. Hindi pa ba sapat na kinuha mo kami sa Egypto na maganda at masaganang lupain para patayin lang kami rito sa ilang? At ngayon, gusto mo pang maghari sa amin? At isa pa, hindi mo kami dinala sa maganda at masaganang lupain o binigyan ng bukid o mga ubasan na aming aariin. Ngayon, gusto mo pa kaming lokohin? Di kami pupunta sa iyo. Wow! If we read through that, we can see very much the context of what happened here. There's a number of Israelites who came and rallied 250 chiefs, leaders inside Israel, and stood against Aaron and Moses. 
And if you can just imagine if you're in that situation, no? kung ikaw si Moses or ikaw si Aaron, di ba sinusunod mo lang naman si Lord? Sabi ni Lord, dalhin sila dito. In fact, the context of this, a couple of chapters earlier, the people of Israelites were rejected from their promise, promised land in chapter 14. And then afterwards, God judged them and said that they will be sent to the wilderness. And the people of God cannot handle the judgment of God. Kaya nga nag or nagpatawag si Korah, si Dathan, at si Abiram ng 250 leaders of chiefs in Israel. And they gathered themselves against Moses. And the accusation is that Moses is just making a fool of them. And what were, they, what were their points? Hindi nila dinala, hindi dinala ni Moses tong Israelites ito sa promised land. And Aaron, the so-called high priest of God, is the only one holy to the Lord. Imagine mo. Ini-imagine ko, ang inisip siguro nila, of course si Aaron yung holy priest or high priest kasi kapatid mo siya. <laughs> Imagine with me if you were in their situation. They were just following the command of God, leading these people. And it is because of their rebellion. Kaya nga hindi sila nakapunta sa promised land. But instead, or instead of just saying, okay Lord, we didn't obey you. Okay, it's our punishment that we stayed stay here in the wilderness. Instead, they actively rejected and rebelled, and they are dishonoring Moses and Aaron. Having said all of those things, how did Moses respond? Look at number 16, verses 4 to 5. It says here, When Moses heard it, he fell on his face, and he said to Korah and all his company, In the morning the Lord will show who are his, and who is holy, and will bring him near to him. The one whom he chooses, he will bring near to him. Quickly, three things that Moses did. Moses made a decision to bring all of his concerns to God. Sabi do sa binasa natin verse, He fell on his face and prayed to God. And not only that, he... he he brought all their concerns. He prayed to God in the other verses. The second thing that he did is that he went back to his identity and his calling. Binalikan niya lang naman kung sino siya. Sabi niya, the Lord will show you who is His. What Moses was basically saying, okay, sige, tingnan natin kung sino ba talaga yung leader ni Lord. So he went back to his calling. He went back to who he is. He went back to his identity. And the third thing that Moses did, uh, sabi niya dito, the Lord knows who are His. I belong to the Lord. Okay? The other thing that Moses did, okay? First one, he poured out all his concerns to God. Another thing that he did is that he sought to bring his enemies before the Lord. Okay, pinatawag niya. Sila, uh, sila Korah, okay, punta tayo dito sa presence ni God. Bring your incense. Bring all those people. Let's go before God. Now think about this. Even in the injustice and rebellion that Moses and Aaron were experiencing, they still wanted their enemies, their opponents, to know God. That is spiritual leadership. <laughs> Ini-imagine ko, ako si Moses at si Aaron, baka kinancel ko na lang sila, inaway ko na rin sila. But what they did was they're trying to pull them back to God. Okay, dali natin. Let's go to the presence of God. Sadly, they didn't listen to Him. Which leads us to the third thing that Moses did. Moses, therefore, looked to God for intervention. Moses firstly came to God and poured out every concern to God. He prayed to God. He prayed for them, prayed about them and their concern. Second thing, he tried to bring them to God and to no effect. Then thirdly, he looked to God for an intervention. What do I mean? And we're familiar with this. Verses 28 to 30. It says here, And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, and that it has not been in, of my own accord. If these men die as all men die, or if they are visited by the fate of all mankind, in short, natural death, okay, then the Lord has not sent me. 
But if the Lord creates something new and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up and all that belongs to them and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall know that these men have despised the Lord. And verse 31 is the miracle that we're talking about. And as soon as he finished speaking all these words, the ground under them split apart and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their household, and all the people who belong to Korah, and all their goods. The response of God is the miracle of the earth swallowing them up. No, sana, no? <laughs> Hindi naman natin pinagpipray na kainin ng lupa yung mga kaaway natin. That's not the lesson that we can get here. I hope our prayer is that, you know, that those people who are against us, that they die. No! <laughs> But what we can see here is that Moses looked to God for justice and intervention. The miracle of the ground opening up is God's miracle to show and uphold the person He has called. You know, maybe for some of us here, you have good motivations, good intentions, and you have tried all that you can to win back your enemies and to reconcile your enemies with you and to no avail. Then the miracle, I believe, that we need to look forward to is to lift it up to God and trust His intervention. And I've felt this and experienced this. You know, sometimes God is the one who acts in beha behalf of us to bring justice. Okay? Minsan may mangyari sa kanila. Tapos parang, oh wow, consequence. Or sometimes, the miracle that's happening, not negatively, but positively, nagbago yung puso. Biglang naging favorable sa'yo. Biglang nag-sorry, biglang lumambot yung puso, biglang nag-change yung perspective. Miracle. Whatever it is, let God fight for you. You know, after all of these things, the ground opening up, Kora being swallowed by the earth. You know, you might think, you mga Israelites, okay, Lord, sunod na kami sa inyo. But actually, that's not what happened. The second half of number 16, Moses and the tribe of Israel, the nation of Israel, was plagued or were plagued by this one word. And it's this word, grumbling. Grumbling is such an issue in the book of Numbers. Grumbling literally means to murmur, to complain. Now, the issue here is not the actual act of saying something. The issue here is the grumbling and the word against. The grumbling is against God. It's against His will and it's against God's leader. The issue of grumbling is not the actual act of talking. The issue of grumbling is from their hearts, they were dishonoring God and their leaders and were rebelling against God. You know, for application, I would like to invite you to do an internal heart check. I know when I read this, I have to take a lot of, you know, internal heart check, asking God to check my heart. What do I mean? When it comes to people standing against us, it's so easy for us that we want God to intervene and to get involved. We want that, right? God, give us justice kasi unjust na nangyari sa akin. Lord, defend me because I've been treated wrongly. And Lord, there's a lot of murmuring and grumbling against me. Fight for me. Show me that you, I belong to you. I fight for me against those who rebel against me, to those who uh, go against me, to those who um, say negative things against me, and all of those things. And I believe God will intervene. We saw that with Moses and Korah's situation, that his rebellion, the rebel, his rebellion's price was God's judgment. But have you ever considered what if you are on the other side of it? Have you ever asked yourself, I know I did, maybe I have been murmuring against those people God placed over me. Have you ever asked if maybe you and I have been the people who murmured, who complained against God and His appointed leaders and His will? Nung nasa kabilang side tayo, gusto natin intervention ni God. 
But I want to invite all of us here to take a pause. What if we're on the other side? We fell into this habit of murmuring, rebelling against God and His leaders. And that's the scary part. Because sooner or later, God will intervene. And that should put an internal fear of God. You know, as I end, did you know that the Apostle Paul referenced uh, Numbers chapter 16 in his letter to Timothy? And that's the verse that I mentioned at the start of our morning worship and prayer. During this time, the church that Timothy was leading or overseeing uh, was being plagued by false teachers. And these teachers has caused the congregation and the teachers themselves to have quarrels inside church. If you read it in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the words irreverent babbles, talks that lead to ungodliness, quarrels and foolish controversies were the words that Paul used. And you know what Paul's encouragement to Timothy is? Because of all the words and the murmurs and the irreverent babbles, naalala ni Paul, oh nga, may ganito na nangyari dati. Number 16, and you know what uh, Paul said? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. But God's firm foundation stand, bearing His seal. The Lord knows those who are His. Remember, that's from number 16, verse 3. Or four. The Lord knows who are His, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. We find our identity in Christ. And if we do that, our hearts and our words should both be honoring to Him, and not just to Him, but to His will, His leaders, and the people around us. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for every one of us here. This is a message. On one end, we want it, we claim it, but if we're, we find ourselves on the other side of it, it's so hard for us. Lord, would you do your work? Lord, may this message be not something that we would use against someone, but may this lead us to reflect and repent necessarily. Do a hard work in us. Lord, that we will not fall to the trap of grumblings and irreverent babbles and talk that leads to ungodliness. But may we get reminded that the Lord knows who are His. And as we name the name of the Lord, may we make a decision before we even put fingers against other people. We ourselves will make a decision to, to, to depart from anything that is iniquity in our words in our, and in our actions. Lord, do a hard work in us. Lord, thank you because you still intervene. We choose to trust your intervention and justice. In Jesus' name, amen. We send an of you. We send an of you. Here in your presence, we send.
thank you for joining us today. Let me just pray and send us out. Lord, I pray for everyone who's watching. I pray, God, that indeed we would learn to look to you for our intervention and salvation. May you also go ahead of us and open the hearts of the people around us. Lord, I pray that we will not stop doing good and that we would constantly reach out and engage uh, the people around us with grace and love. In Jesus' name.